good morning welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Juliet and I run a hair extension business as well as a beauty salon on the side and um, hair business I've been doing for a while salon business I started in 2020 November 2020 and uh, today I just want to show you guys all the things that I've done wrong and all the things that I've done completely completely wrong that cost me so much pain and frustration throughout the business you know people see uh, your business especially when they walk into the space and they feel like you're making so much money or things are going well or things are going smoothly with the business and um, that is a very big lie um i've lost so much money into this business i've been frustrated i've actually gotten to the point that i wanted to give up on the business and uh, these are the part side these are the side of the business that people don't see my friends don't see my customers don't see my followers don't see there's a saying in my language that goes like this it means that you wear you you pack you wear your clothes to cover up your problems like you don't come out looking like what you've been through you know so when you walk into the salon you will never know that it's going through so much that i'm about to explain to you guys so just a quick backstory how i started the salon i've been running a hair business for a while now in a different city not in abuja and um when i moved to abuja in 2020 i moved to abuja in 2019 just before the covid hit so in 2020 after i gave birth i decided to open a new space here in abuja so when I found the space that we are currently at now, it was an amazing space, big, good location, just everything just checked. When I found this place, it was just a little bit over my budget, it was around 600,000 naira or 700,000 naira above my budget. And I said, okay, you know what, I will take this space, but I will have to find something else to be doing at the side to be able to make up the rent. I said, okay, since it's big enough to add a salon, let me add a salon to it. A salon is something that I've always wanted to own but at not at that particular point and not in the scale that i opened it when i like my my vision of opening a salon was to open a salon and a spa and then have a hair extension by the side but i said to myself you always need to start small let me even start small and see if it's something that i want to do because you know it's an idea i've never done it before let me start small if it becomes successful then we can now expand it to a bigger um space so in 2020 we opened the shop in november 2020 just after the lockdown we opened the salon as well as the hair extension and then i started hiring people now i opened the salon and everybody that works in the salon was based on salary um the nail technician the braiders the hairstylists everybody was based on salary and um that was very 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 tough coming from covid coming from post covid that we barely made we didn't even make any money and finding myself in a position that i have to start paying salaries every single month to seven people i had seven people i had a manager i had a salesperson for the hair extension place and then i had two stylists two braiders one nail technician and uh, i was paying seven people salary every month including two staffs that i have in port Harcourt. and that was such a disaster to be honest it was such a disaster but when we opened the salon we, we were getting like customers um my friends were coming in they were referring people people that know us from people that buy hair from us were coming in to install the hairs or do one or two services in the salon but one thing that I failed to do when I started the salon was to understand what I want from the salon. What did I want from the salon? What niche are we carving for the salon? What are we? What is our vision? What do I really want from? Why am I doing this? You know, and uh, because at the point, the only reason I opened that salon was to be able to raise enough money to pay the rent for the space. So the salon was like a side business and because I, I treated it like a side business, I didn't put that much thought to it, which later in the future beat me in the ass because what happened is that I ended up spend, I ended up spending so much money. I was spending so much money on product. I was spending so much money on 
on salaries and things that are very very unnecessary and i spent so much money on making this place look so beautiful i was focusing on the outer on the i was focusing on the external part of the business not the internal part of the business i had no structure for this business i had no goal for this business i had no foundation for this business absolutely nothing i was just running the business on the surface level and did i sink absolutely i sank and the shark even ate me in the sea <laughs> oh my god <sighs> what a journey what a journey I've never been frustrated the way I was with the salon business and it, it has just been just two years and I was so frustrated. It made like it, it got to the point that I was so sad about the business. I was so frustrated about the business. It got to the point that I don't even want to go to the business. I don't even want to go to the shop, to the shop because everything was just going wrong i was sad i was frustrated with my staff i was frustrated with myself i was frustrated with everything that concerned the business and i couldn't find out why am i so sad why am i so frustrated with this business why this is supposed to be you know going well we're supposed to be getting customers we're supposed to be doing this i'm supposed to be making money and i'm ending up losing more money every month i'm losing more money and because the salon was draining me i lost focus on the hair i was focusing more on this on the salon instead of the hair that's actually what is bringing me money and what ended up happening was and I, I run a logistic company i decide that we uh, supply safety materials hospital materials just anything that you could provide food um logistics for expatriate companies and um it's just based on contract it's not like binance and everything is based on contract so what ended up happening is that i kept using money from money that i'm making from this logistic business to pay my salary uh, to pay my staff in the salon and the hair business i kept taking money from that logistic business to pump into the business and i'm still not seeing any growth and that is because I was focusing on the wrong aspect of this business. I was not, I didn't have any goal for the business. We didn't have any mission. My staff don't even know what they want from me. I don't know what I want from my staff. I don't know what I want from the business. So the people that I hired to work in the business have no idea what they, what, what they want, what I want them to achieve. So everybody was just confused. I don't know if, if what I'm saying is, make, makes sense. Everybody, including my staff, was just confused because there was no standard. The only standard that I put in that salon was just the space. It was just the, 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 the aesthetic. That was the only standard. In terms of structure, we didn't have any standard. I didn't have standard of the type of worker that I'm supposed to hire. And I had issue firing people when they are not performing. So someone would be would be underperforming. I would keep paying the person's salary and getting frustrated because the person is not making enough money to even pay their salary. But I'm not I'm not firing people. So I keep retaining people and I keep hiring people more. Um, there was one time we had um, uh, we were getting customers for braiding. We had two braiders. We were getting customers for braiding, and uh, one of the clients complained that they waited that they had took more than six to seven hours to get done. This was not less braid, which is supposed to be normal. And I'm like, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hire one more hand or two more hands so that if you come to get your braids done, sharp, 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 you will go. Without thinking, how am I going to pay this new staff? Is, how much are we making from these services? Is it enough for us to hire another person? How many braids do we need to do in a month to be able to pay one staff their salary? This was not in my head at all. I was just running the business like a mad person. I'm like, ah, ah, I'm like, oh, yeah, like, like a total mad woman. I was just doing stuff like, <sighs> Do you guys know that I didn't have an employment later? Like I'm hiring these people. I'm hiring so many people. I had seven staff. At one point I had about nine staffs with no employment later, no offer later, no guarantor, no rules and regulation, absolutely nothing. I was not providing any document for the 
for the, for the staff the, the staff was not providing any document they're not sending in their cv i would just be like okay this one go tell me say, i have my sis my friend though um that her sister knows how to braid here so i bring the person let the person come for interview one or two talk i'll be like okay let me see what you can do and then the person will do not let's braid and then you will look nice i'm like okay you can start work can you imagine the kind of the level of stupidity the level of stupidity so i was just doing everything wrong like i said we didn't have any policy in the salon and before now i've not managed more than two people in my business when i was before i started before uh, before 2020 i only had two staff one was my assistant the other person was my brother and we were doing the hair business um, together and they were also helping me do um, run the logistic business you know but it was just two of us and these two people are people that I know personally they are family to me my assistant is someone that I saw grow up uh, in my front so I know how I brought her into the business I thought that everything that she knows about the business so it was easy going with her she understand how I think what I want and all of that but these other people that i'm hiring i know nothing about them and i have zero knowledge on how to manage people and if you run a, any business that you have more than three staff you know that one of the most difficult aspect of business is managing people because i have no knowledge on people management or anything that has to do with managing people managing staff leading it was difficult for me to get the best that i can from my staff so everybody was just moving mad everybody was just doing whatever they want to do because at the end of the day me as the person that owns this business have no idea where i'm going with the business i have no idea what i want from my staff so everybody is just there doing their best that is absolutely nothing as we started the salon business we were doing everything we we're braiding start installing natural hair dreading men hair that that, that. we are literally doing everything and that was a failure from the beginning i forgot the rule of every business you have to pick a niche in every industry that you're in just like the hair business at the beginning of 2019 when we restarted the hair business we picked a niche into selling just mostly our hair was bob hair and bone strain hair and we were known for bone straight hair in portacourt even up until now like people know us for the, one of the best bone straight you can ever buy here in nigeria and it's, i'm not just saying it you can ask around you know and if you've ever bought hair from us bone straight hair from us leave a comment down below because this is where we get our most review and now look at what was happening because i was so distracted from the because i was so focused on the salon that was not doing well and i have no idea what i was doing with the salon i was distracted from the hair and i was running the hair the same way i was running the 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 salon the same way i was running the salon now both these two businesses was now suffering because i was still moving mad i thought that i have to renovate the salon i need to lift up the standard and make it more beautiful and all of that and i started contacting chinese factory to you know make furniture salon furniture for me and um, we started renovation that was april last year as those items came from china and uh, i was so happy i'm like okay after now the place will now be banged and all of that i told my staff that we'll start renovation in april and they will have to close for like four weeks for the renovation during that renovation like two or three weeks into that renovation is when it hit me that i am doing everything wrong i am wasting money millions of naira on the external look of this space without putting any money any money on building the structures of the business in terms of training the staff in terms of hiring people that are educated and have good work experience in this type of area i was just spending millions of naira buying furniture that will bring me no money that's when it hit me that the problem that i had was not the hat was not how the business looks like it was not what my staff was wearing it was not anything that has to do with the external look of this business is everything that has to do with the structure the goal the foundation what i want 
from this business and when that happened we already everything that we needed for this provision has been bought already so i already spent that million so i woke up one morning i said to myself we have to something has to change i have to do something differently i cannot be moving like this i cannot move forward like this if i continue moving the way i'm moving I will, I will keep on losing money and I will get to the stage that I will have to close down the business because I will not have more, any more money to put into the business. The amount of money that the business have taken from me is something that I could have used for good investment that will yield me, you know, multiple millions by now. So I started asking myself, what do I need to do first? What do I need to change first to start re-strategizing the structure of this business? And the number one thing that came to my head was to fire every incompetent staff that I had. And not necessarily incompetent, every staff that I have that are not necessary, that we don't need to run this business right now, I need to fire them. And I have five staff in the salon that two people can actually do the job that these whole five people we are doing. After like a week of thinking about it, you know, looking at the staff, analyzing them and all of that, I came to work one morning and I called them, I said, so I called them, I told them, you guys know the business has been slow, uh, we are not making enough money to even pay your salary, you know that you are not making your salary in this space and uh, moving forward I cannot continue to pay you salary from the other business that I have so I will have to let you guys go. And let me tell you something, that was one of the best decisions I made for my business you today so after i let these five people go i started thinking okay what what do i need to put in place as we are starting this salon again what else do we need to do i said okay i have to start um getting documents for them i need to give them employment later i need to make sure that anybody that, that is coming to work for us have a good cv i need to make sure that they have we have our rules and regulations there's policy that guides the salon we have to um, have vision and goal and lastly we need a niche we need to we need to focus on one thing we need to find what we are good at and focus on it or i need to figure out what do i want to be known for so one week after the renovation with all this my plan and all the strategies that i had in mind one week after we finished the renovation exactly one week after we finished the renovation we are just like putting things together um arranging the hairs hanging the hairs back in the in the shelves my nail technician um my 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 nail technician then came into the store one day and packed all our goods well stole all our goods and ran away so he stole goods worth over twelve thousand dollars which is around eight point something million now and uh, ran away now how did this happen the secretary or the secretary the guy in charge of opening the salon and closing the salon gave him the key to come to the salon and take something from the salon so he used that opportunity to steal most of our goods this also brings me back from hiring people that are incompetent it's not that i've not seen the the this uh, it's not that i've not seen this carelessness from this particular girl before is well known is known that you someone cannot enter that salon if you are not there be it a staff member be it my younger sister be it anybody you have to be there in the salon for another person to come inside you can there is no way you give someone a work like you, you are not allowed to give anybody the key to walk into that salon without you being there and watching them go, take whatever they want to take and go because we have goods, we have millions of goods in that salon and you just allow a nail technician that is even a bad staff that we are, that I was even going to fire to come into the salon at, by 7 in the morning 7 in the morning he told you that he wants to do home service every home service that we do is recorded, it's booked How, who booked this home service that he was talking about? you have no idea, I just gave him key and he opened my salon stole my goods and ran away um so that happened and, and this was before i was able to implement these new structures that i had in my head um so after that happened three days after that happened i lost my baby and um yeah i lost my baby i lost my money my business was going down 
and um, I felt like the world was crumbling down on me and um, it broke me so much I was going through so much pain that period that I had to quit work all these ideas that I had for the business was not implemented so the business was just running there uh, just like that we we'll keep continue uh, we continue losing money so when i started work was in september yes i started work in september october that was one month after september ending of october something else mm, something else happened that i almost lost my life and uh, i had to leave the business again <sighs> second week of november i completely stopped work and you guys noticed that absent on my youtube channel because i was not posting anywhere i was not available i was fighting for my life uh, i was in and out of the hospital in and out of emergency until this january and we are just in march now and um, i just resumed work last week last week was the official day that i resumed work this is my second week um back into the business since last year so all these ideas that i had i did not implement anything but now that i've resumed work i am planning to start putting these structures in place and um, having proper documentation of my staff and because before i didn't have any proper documentation they didn't have any records so anybody all the people that worked with me has no record that they've worked with, with me in the past you know so but now we have to prepare a proper recording for our staff and um, put in some policies and some uh, rules and regulations. Currently, this is where we are now. From next week, everything will start changing small, small. I'm not going to go in like this, like, you know, I want to do everything. And I will take my time and do it the way it's supposed to be done and also consult lawyers and, you know, make sure that all our documentation are legally binding so i don't end up in court tomorrow <laughs> this is my story this is my experience running a salon it's uh, it's not what i thought it was people walk into the salon and they think that i make so much money and because it's very beautiful the place looks amazing the space is not big but the way we manage the space it looked so good it looked like i should go become a an interior decor <laughs> instead of a salon owner because i did more job on decorating the place and putting the space in a good way in a good looking way than i'm doing with running the business uh, itself so <laughs> i've learned so much uh, from running the business and i know that um moving forward i have to put more effort i have to give everything that i have into the business and hopefully the business is going to give me back everything that it can because you cannot put minimum effort and expect a maximum result it does not work like that and i've been in business for so long and i know that is what you put is what you get there is no there's no higgy haga is everything that you put is what you're going to get back if you put more effort you're gonna get more result back so uh now that i've known that now that i've woken up from my slumber sleep I am gonna try to make this business work. I also want to hear your experience running your own business, whether it's beauty business, hair business, clothing business, skincare business, whatever business that you do, I would love to hear your experience in the comment section. Let's have an open conversation about our frustration, our learnings and our progress and what we've done to help our business grow and help us grow as a person so i'm waiting to hear that on the comment section if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it subscribe follow us on social media the salon page i'm gonna leave our salon page which is julieta beauty salon abuja and our hair page is julieta hair collection um julieta hair collection and my personal page is julieta benica just like my youtube name so follow us on social media and i will catch you guys on my next video Mwah. bye for now <laughs>